Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. This is another day that the Lord has blessed us, that we are able to come together one more time. This is another day that the Lord has made, and we ought to clap our hands. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to just lift our hands in praise this morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to open up our mouths and just tell the Lord, thank you. Just say thank you for one more day, for one more privilege, for one more opportunity to praise your holy name. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. All those who can stand, come on, stand on your feet as we invite his presence in the house this morning. If you can stand, come on, stand on your feet. Come on, young people, stand up. Come on. Let's pray. Almighty God, our Father, the giver of every good and perfect gift, we come to thank you this morning for the perfect gift you sent our way. That being the son of your, that being your son, Jesus the Christ who died that we may have the right to the tree of life. So this morning we've come to lift up your name. We've come to praise you today, God, because you are worthy of all the praise. So this morning we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would tabernacle here in this place, even if you don't stay long. Come on and move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Come on and speak until you get tired of speaking and move until you get tired of moving. Until somebody says yes to your will, yes to your way. Yes, God, we will obey. Now, God, have your way in the service. We love you, we thank you, and we praise you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. You may take your seats as our choir will now lead us this morning. Opening selection. Praise the Lord, everybody. Recorded.
recorded in this word. Hallelujah. It's in his word. It's recorded in his word. Hallelujah. Recorded in his word. Hallelujah. Yes, it's recorded. Oh, stay right there. Stay right there. It's recorded. It's in his word. Hallelujah. It's in his word. You got to look at what? Live. It's recorded. It's in his word. Hallelujah. You got to look and live. Come on. Come on, look and live. Look and live. Why? Because it's recorded. It's recorded in his word. And all you got to do is look and, and, and live. Now, I, I didn't say be, and I said die. Come on, Caleb. I didn't say die. I said look and live. You want to tell somebody, are you living? Ask them, are you living today? Because it's already been recorded. In his word. And all you gotta do is look and live. Maybe, 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 maybe it's the color of my jersey that's messing you up why you ain't worshiping this morning. Maybe, maybe you just don't like my my football team, why you ain't worshiping this morning. Maybe, maybe I need to call a Washington commander. No, I, I better not call them up here this morning so you can see their uniform. And maybe you might want to work. Or maybe I need to call a Dallas Cowboy fan up here to help. See, see, folks shout when it's football time, but when we come to church, we got to be a little quiet. No, 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 no. This is the place that we ought to come and worship God. This is the place that we ought to come and open up our mouths to let God know we're thanking. This is the place. It's all right to be the root for your football team. But you got to root for your God, first of all, because he made us. Amen, amen. Kayla, this morning, is going to give us our responsive reading. I know we haven't done responsive reading in the church for a long time now. But this morning, we're going to have responsive reading. So you need your hymn books this morning. So you need your hymn books. Tell your neighbor you need your hymn books. Grab a hymn book. Don't look at me. Grab a hymn book. You can't read without the hymn books. All right? Grab a hymn book. And Caleb, we're doing 589, right? The majesty of God. So grab a hymn book. Come on, stand on your feet. Caleb is going to lead us this morning in responsive reading. That means you got to do something. You got to participate this morning. You got to participate. Got to participate. 589. 589. 589. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading responsive reading number 589, The Majesty of God, coming from Psalms 8. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thy enemies, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. 
When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon of the stars, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou with him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with the glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yeah, and the beasts of the field. The fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the path of the sea. All together. O Lord, our Lord. How, How excellent, excellent is thy name, name in all, all the earth. earth. Amen. 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 Can we praise God for Kayla this morning? Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kayla, maybe you should have wore your green and gold today. Uh, they would have gotten more excited. And we could have just said, behold, the green and gold. Yeah. Amen. I ain't saying about yeah. I would say you hot. Do all that in there right there. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. It's prayer time. It's time that we come to pray together. Come on, Malika. Malika is going to come this morning and she's going to pray for us. Our youth are participating in service on this morning. Amen. 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 What would our church be if we didn't have young people to come behind us? to take our places when we are gone, amen. So I'm gonna ask this morning that while we're here, that you join in with Malika as she prays this morning because all of us stand in the need of prayer and all of us know somebody that needs us to pray for them. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I know it because somebody prayed for you one day when you need it. When you needed prayer. So this morning, join in with Malika as she prays. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for bringing us all here together, especially our youth for our Youth Sunday. Um, I want to pray for our sick and shut in as well. Please give them the courage to heal, to be strong, and give them strength to move forward. I also want to praise God for... Um, Take your time, baby. For bringing me here today. Um, thank you for getting me up um, so I can see all my fellow worshipers. I also want to um, ask God to please pray for all of us for this upcoming election. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And I also want to thank God for bringing my family together. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you. Go back to the top right there saying, I sing praises.
Amen. Amen. Praise be unto our God on this morning. Your name is great, greatly to be praised. Thank you, Malika, for leading us this morning in prayer. Uh, Brother LJ is going to come now. He's going to welcome everybody this morning. Come on, can we bless God for LJ this morning? When you cut the dread, save them for me. May all visitors please stand. We are so glad to have you here with us today. Whether you are new to our church or have been here for a long time, we want you to know that you are valued and loved in this community. We hope you find peace, joy, and a sense of belonging here. May today's service inspire you, uplift you, and remind you of God's presence in your life. Now we will have further remarks from our pastor, Bobby A. Bowser. Amen. Please remain standing. I'll visit those who stood. Come on, still remain standing for us. We're so happy to have you this morning uh, to be with us on this fourth Sunday in the month of October. We are just grateful that you've taken the time to come to be with us here at Mount Lebanon. But we do realize that you could have gone someplace else. But you decided to cast your lot here with us on this morning. So we want to say to you, welcome to Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. And we pray that whatever you're seeking, we pray that you find it here in this house on today. If you're looking for a church that you can come to be a part of, to join, we invite you to come to be with us here at Mount Lebanon. Now let me just go ahead and give you the words. We're not a perfect church. We're not a perfect church, but we are striving to be better every day. And if you think you can find the perfect church, stop looking right now because there are no perfect churches, because there are no perfect people. So that's why we welcome you to Mount Lebanon, that you could come to be a part of us, this family called Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Anytime you're in the vicinity, please come to see us again. God bless you. You may take your seats. Amen. Can we bless God for our visitor this morning? Amen, amen. Praise God, praise God. Now, we know that we have some other folks that are visiting also. They didn't wish to stand this morning, but that's all right. We praise God. We praise God for you on this day. Amen, amen. Just a few announcements on this morning. I don't think anybody else has any but me. Come on, Sister Sheila, you got an announcement? Okay. I think she's coming with some money this morning. I ain't sure. So if you come with some money, okay, all right. Not this time. Oh, okay. Wow. That's what you call looking for a treat. You get a trick. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to say that after church, we will be doing um, trunk or treat for our kids. We do have um, barbecue sliders and baked beans for everybody else in the congregation. And I just want to say thank you to um, my college students who came out this morning to participate. <laughs> Um, along with youth because they still are part of youth, amen? And they are still doing good things along with our youth. So happy harvest to everybody. All right, praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, this morning we do realize that it's time for us to vote. If you have not voted, please get out as soon as you can to vote. Vote early if you can. I've already voted. How many of you have already voted? Just lift your hand if you've already voted. Okay. Now, if you haven't voted, please, please get out. Get out early. Get out early to vote. Uh, and I know that there are some people who, that you may run into and say, well, I, I'm, I'm not going to vote. My vote doesn't count. I, I, I'm, that's why I'm not going to vote. Let me tell you what you say when they tell you that my vote won't count. Tell them these words. It's called... Feel, felt, found. Y'all say that with me. Feel, feel felt, felt, found. Feel, felt, found. Tell them, tell them this. When they say I'm not going to vote, say, I know how you feel. I used to, I felt like that one time too. But I found something different. And what I found was that they count every vote. And one plus one still equals two. And if you don't vote, then you have no voice. So you can't complain about 
who wins or loses in the election because you didn't participate. That's how I used to feel, but I found something different because I found that my vote does count. Please get out to vote. Amen. Amen. For those of you who are here this morning um, and you are looking around and you see some of us have our jerseys on and some of us don't, it's that on the fourth Sunday during the football season, we, we, wear, our, we wear our jersey. If you're not ashamed of your team, you wear your, you wear your jersey. You wear your jersey, you know, the church, okay? And that, that's why you see some of us with our jerseys on because, you know, we, we're representing our team. Whether they are winning, Chris, or they are losing right now, <laughs> we still represent. We still represent our team. I didn't ask for any comments in the background. I just said whether the team is winning or the team is losing. I'm just saying. That's all. In the words of Boston Lee, I'm just saying. That's all. That's all. We wear our jerseys. Next month is Church Anniversary Month, and we will be celebrating Church Anniversary every Sunday in the month of November. So we will be doing something every month in the month of November to celebrate Church Anniversary. This church will be 118 years in existence <laughs> next month. 118 years, and not only that, but we will be celebrating 50 years in this location right here on Campus Stella Road. 50 years right in this location. So we will be celebrating. We'll be celebrating all the month of November. Amen. 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 Praise, praise God, praise God. Um, at this time, Brother Jalen is going to come with our morning scripture. Is that right, Jalen? He he's going to come. He's going to come with the morning scripture, and if he smiles, I'll let him stand right here with me. If he does not smile, y'all tell him, go back and sit down. <laughs> okay? He's going to give us our morning scripture, and then we, the choir's going to sing, and we'll come back with the word. Come on, Brother Jalen. All right, if you can turn with me to um, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 16, I'll be reading verses 1 through 12. Again, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 16, verses 1 through 12. I'll wait for everybody to get there. All right, if you dare say amen. amen. All, right. All right. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. And when I come, whomsoever ye shall approve by your letters, then will I send to bring your, bring your liberty unto Jerusalem. And if it be meet that I go also, they shall go with me. Now I, will go, now I will come unto you when I shall pass through Macedonia, for I do pass through Macedonia. And it may be that I will abide, yeah, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey whatsoever I go. For I will go, for I will not see you now by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you, if the Lord permit. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Now if Timotheus comes, see that he may be with you without fear for he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do let no man therefore despise him but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me for I look for him with the brethren as touching our brother Apollos I greatly desire him to come unto you with the brethren but his will was not at all to come at this time. 
but he will come when he shall have come in it time. For the reading of the word, amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Jalen. Amen. Amen. For those of you who were looking at the screen, he was not reading from the NIV this morning, okay? He had, what was that, King James? He had King James Version this morning. That's okay. That's okay. Same word. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Kwai's going to sing now. Come on, Kwai. was torn beyond repair I felt so alone seemed no one cared you came along gave me a song to ease the pain and you leave the strain
when you did just what you said. Come on, can we bless God for the choir this morning? Amen. Praise God. Praise God for our choir on this morning. So good to be here in this place once again and to see some that I haven't seen in a while. And we're grateful for you on this morning. God is still in the blessing business. You didn't say that right. I said God is still in the blessing business. Amen. He's in the blessing business, and I'm so glad about that. So glad about that on this morning. Come on, join me now in prayer this morning. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for how you blessed us just to come together on another Sunday morning. We thank you this morning, God, as we woke up able to see the bright sunshine. Feel your presence across our brows this morning. We ask right now, Holy Spirit, that you would come and speak through these lips of clay, uh, that your word would make a difference in somebody's life today. Let me say it right. Let them hear it right. Let us do it right. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. This morning, Brother Jalen read from Scripture, read from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, reading 1 through 12 this morning. I want to go to verse number 8 and 9 this morning is where we will focus our attention this morning. Uh, verses 8 and 9. Paul says these words to the church at Corinth. From the NIV, he says, I will stay on at Ephesus until Pentecost because a great door for effective work has been opened to me and there are many who oppose me. Amen. I've been hanging out with this subject, talking about moving to a new place in God. You've been talking about moving to a new place in God. And I'm going to continue this series this morning. And we're just going to call this part three. Part three of the sermon on this morning. I'll conclude with this on this morning about moving to a new place in God. Well, last week as I talked about moving to a new place in God, I talked about uh, how oftentimes it is that uh, in order for us to move forward, move to a new place in God, we sometimes need a door to be open for us. Sometimes we need an opportunity to come our way in order for us to move to a new place in God. Door to swing open, a new opportunity to come to us in order for us to move to a new place in God. And I've been thinking about that on this week, and I, I, I thought about this as we've come into this election season right here. I thought about that how it was back in August of 2020. In August of 2020, uh, Joe Biden, who was not the president at that time, came and he asked Kamala Harris if she would be his running mate for the 2020 election. And she said yes. That was an open door for her. And we do realize that in November of 2020, Joe Biden won the election and became the president, which meant that Kamala Harris became the vice president of this country. It was an open door for Kamala Harris. But then I thought about how it was and how we were all upset going into this election right here. But then in July, of this year, how it was that President Joe Biden stepped aside, but he endorsed uh, Vice President Kamala Harris uh, to be the candidate for the Democratic Party for the election, for the 2024 election of this country. That, again, was an open door for Vice President Kamala Harris to move to a higher level if we get behind her, to help her to move to that level. It was just an open door for her. 
And may I suggest to you this morning that if God opens the door, uh, if he opens the door, it, it's for you and I to go through the door to experience what's on the other side of the door. Let me say that again for you. If God opens the door, because I told you last week, every door that opens to you is not a door that's opened by God. But if God opens the door, he opens the door for you to go through the door to get to the other side so you can experience what's on the other side of the door. Well, this morning from our, from our scripture lesson that we had this morning, here, here is that, that, that Paul helps us to know that, that before we can try to move to a higher ground, we need to sometime to handle some things right where we are. Before we move to a higher ground, we need to handle some things right where we are. Listen, before God gets you to try to move to a higher place, oftentimes God has work for us to do right where we are before we move to a higher place ground to a higher level. Now all of us want to move forward. All of us want to have a door open for us that we can go higher, that we can rise above where we are right now. But sometimes before you think about going forward, you ought to finish the work Okay, I've come back to talking to myself this morning. You ought to finish the work where you are right here before you move forward. Paul this morning understands his assignment, and, and Paul on this morning, morning says, in order for me to go forward, I, I, I can't go forward right now because I know it's an open door for me and that God has opened the door, but I got some work that I got to do right here before I move forward. May I suggest to you this morning, before you get in a hurry trying to run to the top of the class, you need to learn some stuff right where you are. Mm. Oftentimes we want to rise to the top of the class but without even completing the assignment right here in, in where we are. Can I tell you what will happen to you if you move too fast? If you move too fast, when you get up on that ladder, if you go too fast and you don't finish the assignment down here, you won't be ready when you get up here. Okay, let me just go on and make my point real, real clear for you because all y'all didn't get that this morning. Listen, oftentimes we don't want to get the fundamental before the fundamentals, we just want the principle of the thing and try to move to the principle level of, of where we are. Okay, let me, let me see if I make it real, real plain for you this morning for all the children to understand that o o oftentimes of, of us who are young people, young men who are playing football, oftentimes, you know, we want to go to the next level. We want to move up to the next level to play with the, with the big boys, but we haven't learned the fundamentals down here yet. And if when you move to the big level, up to, up to another level with the big boys, and you haven't learned the fundamental, the big boys up here that's got the fundamental and the principle will let you know you ain't learned what you need to learn. And that's why you can't stay up here, because you haven't learned what you should have learned down here. I'm just trying to help my young folks this morning because I want you to understand, ain't, ain't no need to think you're going to the 12th grade and graduating and you still reading on a 6th grade level. I'm just trying to be plain this morning. Ah, because when you come out to this society right here, ain't nobody going to worry about what you learn. Ain't nobody going to really try to help you. They're going to say you should have learned it when you were back there. So let's get it down here right on this level before we try to move forward. Here it is. Here's my point this morning from a text that I won't be long this morning. I said, and I know y'all saying y'all done heard that before too. But I won't be long this morning because here it is this morning in the text right here. Paul, Paul, Paul sees some things. And the question that I got to ask Paul this morning about, about, about an open door to Paul, what do you see? Well, what, what do you see this morning, Paul, that causes you really want to stay there at Ephesus? Here's what Paul says. Paul says, really, what, what I see, Bobby, this morning is the open door that I have for me right now can lead to a path of greatness. That the, where I am right now can lead to a path of greatness. You look at verse number 9, because verse 9 says, Paul said, there's a great door that has been opened to me. Well, I heard Reverend uh, Marissa Farrow say, before you move too fast, evaluate before you elevate. Evaluate before you 
elevate. In, in other words, I, I, I heard Jesus says in Luke 14 and 28, Jesus paraphrased this thing. Jesus says you have, to need, you have to learn to count the cost first before you try to move forward too fast. Count the cost. Oftentimes we don't count the cost before we try to move. And that's when we don't count the cost, it costs us because we didn't count the cost. So if an open door or opportunity comes your way, don't be afraid sometimes to ask for help. Don't be afraid sometimes to ask for help. Listen, listen, when you get some help to help you to go forward, it makes the load easier for you to carry when you get some help. And oftentimes, we don't want folks to help us because we want to take all the credit for ourselves to tell somebody that we did all this all by ourselves. But may I suggest to you today that in, in, order, for, in order for you to move forward sometimes, God has designed this thing for you to get some help in order for you to go forward because sometimes the burdens are too heavy for you to carry all by yourself. So that's why God has already got somebody on the sideline waiting to help you you out if you just allow him to let the person that he's designed to help you to help you. How many times has it been when you were trying to do something on your own and you really couldn't do it by yourself and then you go and ask somebody and then that person just automatically volunteered and said, listen, I'll do it, I'll help you out. And really what they wanted to tell you was, I've been waiting for you to ask me because I want to help you to carry this thing. I want to help to see you succeed, but I was just waiting for you to help me this morning. But Paul says this morning that an open door has been opened for me this morning, and because of that open door, I realize that I got to stay right where I am right now before I go through that door because the assignment is not complete. Welcome. When we look at Kamala Harris this morning, Kamala Harris had a new door that opened and she's counting on us to help her to go through the door. Well, why is she counting on us? I believe she's counting on us because I, I believe it's a path to greatness in this country right now if she goes through the door. Okay, you missed it, I'll come back and get you again. I believe it's a path to greatness for her if she goes through the door because if she goes through the door, it's going to open up some more av and some new avenues for us because she will be the first woman, not just black woman. Not okay, y'all missed it. She'll be the first woman, not just the first black woman to be the president of these United States of America. And you do know that they didn't want Barack Hussein Obama to be the president because he was a black man and he served two terms. You know good and well they, they really don't want a black woman to lead. Matter of fact, some folks don't want a woman to be in charge anyway, but you got to realize this morning is that when God opens up a door, ain't no devil in hell can close that door that God opens up. You want to tell somebody this morning, I believe God is opening up a new door here in America because the folks that have been trying to push us back for over a hundred years right now are going to see that we are God's people and if we are God's people, that means God is on our side and God is going to open up a door that we can get through the door where God is trying to take us. Preach, Bobby, trying to take us to this morning. Paul says this morning, Paul says there's a great door that has been opened. Well, well, the question is, Paul, what, what, what does Paul see this morning? Paul says, I see an open door, and that door can be a path to greatness. But then, secondly, Paul says, what I see is that the open door can lead to the possibility of growth this morning. It can lead to the possibility of growth. Well, well, Paul says in verse 8, he says, I, I will stay in Ephesus. Paul says, I'm going to stay in Ephesus. I, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to stay in Ephesus until, Pente until Pentecost. He says, I'm going to stay in Ephesus until Pentecost. Well, staying in Ephesus, Paul could grow personally. If Paul stayed in Ephesus right now before moving, going to Corinth, he could grow personally personally. Why is that, Pastor? It's because Ephesus now is a fertile ground for Paul to work. And whenever 
God opens up a door for us and we know the ground is fertile, that means it's time for us to go to work. Jesus says in Matthew 9 and 35, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. And what Paul is saying right now is because Ephesus is a fertile ground, Paul says that I can not only grow, uh, grow personally, but I can also grow uh, purposefully. Because I know my purpose, and my purpose is to give the word of God to the people who need God's word. But we have to understand here in America is that the church has to be on, be mindful that the church has to keep spreading the word of God. Not your word, but God's word because God, because the the people in this world need God's world. But when we look at life right now, our culture is shifting from God. We are shifting from God. We are shifting from Christianity. And part of the reason is because we keep, as a church, we keep trying to change to keep up with the culture. And what we don't understand is that, that we are not called to keep up with the culture. We are called to change the culture because the culture should be whatever the church says it should be. We are called to be the leaders. We are called to be the head and not the tail. And if we want the world to go in a direction that God is leading us, then we have to try our best to change the culture in which we live right now. But I keep hearing folks talking about, Pastor, we need to change this. We need to try to keep up with this and keep up with that. Baby, can I tell you something? Ain't but one thing in the church we need to try to keep up with, and that is keep up with God. To move wherever God is moving. Because if you're not moving where God is moving, you can't get the blessing that God has in store for us. That's why the church sometimes starts falling behind is because we, we trying to keep up with the world. No, 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 we ain't trying to keep up with the world. The world needs to keep up with us because we are God's people. But can I help somebody this morning? If we look at the church sometimes, we, we look at ourselves and we are constantly drifting. We are constantly drifting, drifting away from God. Ah, oh, but I, I, I do realize this morning that, that I need to tell you that the church has an anchor. And the anchor that the church has is called Jesus. And, and if we hang our anchor on Jesus, he's a solid rock. And that rock ain't going nowhere. Well, how, how you know it ain't going nowhere, Pastor? I, I, I know because it's been over 2,000 years now. And that rock ain't going nowhere yet. And we still standing on the rock of Jesus. Well, may I suggest to you this morning that every boat has an anchor. And the anchor is there in the boat for you is that when you want to be in the water and you don't want to do a lot of drifting, Terry, you got to throw your anchor out. And if your anchor catches and holds on to the rock, you ain't going to drift but so far. May I suggest to you, for those of you who are looking at me funny this morning, to let you know why we can't get to where we are sometimes, it's because we keep on drifting. Uh, we keep on drifting in and out of love. And I'm going to talk about love on next week, if the Lord say so. But I want to let you know on this morning that, that we keep falling in and out of love. And, and for some of us, we keep on falling in and out of the church. Every now and then, we in the church. Are in love with God, but then before you know it, we out of the church because we ain't in love with God because somebody done got on our nerves, so therefore we ain't in love with God no more. Can I tell you something about God? The good thing about God is it no matter how you fall out of love with him, he keeps on loving you anyway. And you ought to tell somebody this morning, I'm so glad that God loves me so much that even when I fall out of love, even when I stop coming to church every now and then, God still loves me. And he doesn't throw me to the junk pile because I drift, I drift away sometimes. You ought to lift your hands up this morning and thank God for a God who, who does not move, who's, who's in love with you and keeps on loving you in spite of what you do, your failures, your mistakes. He still loves you and he doesn't drift from you, but you keep drifting from him. Uh, 
Paul said this morning, Paul said, listen, there's a, the great door has been opened, and this door that's been opened for me can, can lead to my growth. And I'm glad this morning that Paul says that it can lead to my growth this morning because all of us need to grow. Come on, somebody, help me this morning. I'm almost done. All of us need to grow. As a matter of fact, I'll go on and throw it out there. You can get mad if you want to. Some of us need to grow up. We still acting like babies. Grow up. Keep on. You need to grow up sometime. Folks going to hurt your feelings. Yeah, they're going to hurt your feelings. They hurt Jesus' feelings, but he didn't stop loving them. Grow up sometimes. Paul says, a great door has been opened. It can lead to my growth, but I'm done this morning because last, the last thing Paul says, listen, this great door, he says, well, he, watch, he says, this great door that has been opened for me, Paul says, I, I, I believe it's going to lead to glory. It's, it's going to lead to glory, this door that has been opened. How, how, how you know it's going to lead to glory, Bobby? I, I know because if you read verse number 9, uh -huh. verse 9 says, Paul, Paul says, this is the great door and effective, this, this great door and effective work has been opened to me, but it says, and, and there are many who oppose me. Okay, you missed that, but I'll come and get you back. I was slow one time, too. Listen, he says, there's a great door that was open to me, but there are many who oppose me. Now, if you read the King James or the New King James, it, it says, there are, he said, there are, I have many adversaries. You see it right there? She's smart over there. She put it up on the board for you. There are many, adver Paul says, I have many adversaries. Listen, it, 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 everybody knows that when you follow in God, you're going to have some oppositions. Yeah. E everybody that I know that's been in the church for any time knows that when you come to be on the Lord's side, you're going to have some oppositions. E everybody that I know know that, that when you come to be on the Lord's side, the devil is going to get busy trying to break that connection that you have with God. Everybody that I know have some adverse, has some adversaries and always going to have some adversities. Some adversaries, but you can also have some adversities. And if anybody knew the, anybody knew the adversities, that adversities came in the midst of your working in the ministry, Paul knew it. Paul knew that, that, that when, you, when you sign up for the ministry work, oppositions comes with the ministry. It comes with the territory. That even when you pray for an open door, oppositions comes with the ministry. Look at what Paul says in Colossians 4, verses 2 and 3. Paul, Paul says, continue steadfast in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mysteries of Christ. Well, I need to ask Paul a question before I go this morning. The question is, Paul, why are you going to take this assignment? Why will you take this assignment, Paul, when, it's, when you know there's going to be opposition? Why are you going to take this assignment, Paul, when you know there's going to be some adversities? Well, I hear what Paul said this morning. Pa -pa -pa I be Paul said this morning that, that I realized that, that when I followed Jesus, and I started to follow him. I had adversities, and I had some adversaries. He says, I had some adversities, but I also had some adversaries. Well, I, I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence this morning, Barney, but, but I, 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 I don't want to insult your intelligence because I know you know the difference between adversities and adversaries. You know the difference between adversities and adversaries. You see, adversities are problems. Adversaries are people. Adversities are issues. Adversaries are individuals. Adversities are burdens. Adversaries are beings. And I hear Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 10, 31b, Paul says, whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Well, somebody here this morning joined the ministry to bring glory to God, knowing that there were adversaries and you discovered some adversities, but you didn't walk away from the ministry because you signed up to bring glory to God. 
somebody got on the usher board and you knew that there were some adversities, but you didn't leave the ministries because you found some adversaries because you realized that you wanted to bring glory to God. Somebody this morning got in the choir and you knew that there was some adversities in the choir and you ran into some adversaries in the choir, but you stayed in the choir because you wanted to bring glory to God. Somebody got on the trustee board this morning and you realized that there were some adversities on the trustee ministry and you ran into some adversaries on the trustee ministry, but you do the work because it's all for the glory of God. Somebody got on the Deegan ministry this morning and you realized there were some adversities on the Deegan's ministry and you ran into some adversaries on the Deegan's ministry, but you didn't get off because it was all about bringing glory to God. Well, Paul realizes this morning that he wants to move to a new place in God, rise to a higher level in God. So Paul said this morning, I'm going to stay right here in Ephesus. I I want to go to Corinth, but I realize that I've got to give the word of God to the people in Ephesus this morning that God may get the glory out of my life this morning. And if God gets the glory, God will take me to a new level in him. Is there anybody in the church house this morning know that when you do the ministry that God has called you to, you're going to run into some adversary. You're going to have some adversities, but you can't stop. you got to keep on doing it because it's all for the glory of God. And when you bring glory to Jesus Christ and you bring glory to God, God is pleased with the work that you do because you ain't doing it for yourself. You're doing it that you bring glory to him. May I suggest to you this morning that Jesus had some adversaries. Jesus had some adversities, but he didn't come down from the cross because of his adversaries or his adversities. He stayed on the cross because it was all about bringing glory to Almighty God. Well, good morning, Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. May the Lord bless you real, real good. But if Jesus had some adversities, if Jesus had some adversaries, that means you gonna have some adversities. You gonna have some adversaries, but you can't let your adversities or your adversaries stop you from doing the work of Almighty God. Ah, baby, I got a close right here, but I hear somebody saying, Pastor, I feel like quitting. Pastor, I feel like giving up. Pastor, things ain't going the way I want them to go. Pastor, every time I turn around, somebody's coming at me. But baby, you can't give up. You can't quit. You signed up for this assignment and God will help you. God will help you with your adversities and he will take care of your adversaries. Is there anybody here this morning want to tell somebody I've had some good days. I've had some bad days. I've had some hill to climb. But every time I start climbing, I realize I ain't climbing by myself. I got the Lord who picks me up. I got the Lord who helps me to move a little bit higher and higher and higher in Jesus the Christ. I'm done this morning, but I want to tell somebody this morning, baby, don't quit because of adversities. All of us have adversities. Baby, don't quit because of adversaries. That's what the devil does. He plant adversaries. He plant adversaries. But here's what you got to do. You, you, you got to have some holy boldness. You got to look at, at your adversaries and say, get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> get thee behind me Satan I'm God's child and can I tell you what God will do God will wrap his ever loving arms around you and he will take care of your adversaries for you I've seen him do it 
And he, if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. So you want to tell somebody this morning, listen, I'm lifting my hands up and I'm praising God. I told you a long time ago, when hands go up, praise gets louder. When your hands go up, your praise ought to get louder. You ought to praise him so much that the adversary's got to put a hand in the ear and say, just please stop. Huh? Please, just, just please, please stop. Come on, can I get somebody this morning, this morning, just to open up your mouth and just give God praise? And you're going to make the adversary say, please stop. I, I, I can't take no more. Please stop. You see, your adversary is trying to figure out why, why you still praising God when you look, when it looks like everything is bad for you. You ought to let him know this morning, I'm praising him because he woke me up one more time. Started me on my way. And I'm going to give him praise. And I don't care how loud I get, whether you like it or not, I'm going to praise God. I'm going to praise him so loud, you're going to get sick of me praising him. Keep on praising him right now. Your adversary will put their hands on their ears because they don't want to hear the praises of God. But I heard somebody, heard the little children say, hallelujah, anyhow. Never let a problem get you down. If a problem comes your way, lift your hands and say, y'all know it, don't you? Hallelujah, anyhow. Come on, stand up. Come on, come on. Come on. I done bored you enough for this morning. I see some of y'all like preacher just boring me this morning. I'm trying to help you this morning. Before you leave the church, the adversary is going to come at you. You better get ready for him. Ask God to open the door for you. Open the door for you. And when he opens that door for you, he won't let you to go through that door. Because he's got a blessing for you on the other side. This morning you may be here and you're looking for a blessing. You've been waiting for an open door to come your way. And this morning, I want to tell you, the door has already been opened. Because Jesus died for that door to be opened. And that door that's open for you is a door of salvation. That you can come and give your life to Jesus. And that he'll give you another open door. Because when you come and give your life to Jesus, what he does, he opens heaven's door for you. That when you leave this earth, you go to heaven to be with him. But now, if you don't accept him, that heaven's door will be closed for you. It'll be closed for you. It won't be open because you are not a part of him. So this morning, I'm coming and asking you, come and give your life to him. Just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. And then heaven's door is open for you. But if you know you've never done that, then heaven's door is not open to you until you do that. Right now the door is open waiting for you. But if you don't do it, you can't go through the door. So I ask you, my brother, my sister, if you've never confessed Jesus, you've never been baptized, you've never been saved, come and give your heart to him this morning. And heaven's door will open to you. A door of salvation that you can be with the Lord when you die. If you're here this morning, also the door is open for you if you want to be a part of this church. If you're already saved, you've already been baptized, you want to come and join the church this morning, we welcome you this morning to come and join us here at Mount Lebanon Baptist Church. You can be a part of the family of God here at Mount Lebanon. We open that door to you this morning. If that's you, my brother, my sister, you can come this morning. Come on. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and be a part of the church. Every head bowed, every head bowed. If you're thinking about coming, I'm praying for you right now. Come on, come on. Come on and give your hearts. Come on, baby. Come on, if you come this morning, come on. If you want to come. If you want to come, come on. We're getting ready to do baptism. If you've never been saved, it's a good time for you to be baptized. Come on. Thank you, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Somebody else wants to come. Somebody else wants to come. I feel your presence. I know you're here this morning. I know you're here this morning because I woke up this morning, I prayed and I asked God to let somebody come to be a part of the kingdom this morning. Listen, you only get today. You only get to, you don't have tomorrow. I know you're young, but you don't have tomorrow. 
All you got is today. That's all you got. It's your opportunity this morning. That you can be a part of the kingdom this morning. You can be a part of the kingdom this morning. If you want to. We're waiting for you this morning. This is your day. This day got your name on it. God ordained this day for you to come to give your life unto him. This is your day. This is your moment. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? We've got time. Why don't you come? Come on. Won't you come? Won't you come? God is pleading with you to come to give your life to him. Because he wants you to be a part of the family of God. Now, never think you're too young. Never think you're too young. Young folks die like old folks die. If you go to Roosevelt Cemetery this morning, you look out there, you see graves, long ones, middle ones, small ones, all kinds. So come this morning. Give your heart. Give your heart to Jesus this morning. Come on. Come on. All those who are standing, just pray for those who are at the altar this morning. Just pray for those at the altar this morning. Just pray for those at the altar. Be with you this morning. Okay. All right. Just pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Yeah. Pray for them. Maybe see it. We sing praises to your name.
our prayers. And they need our prayers because going to school can be dangerous now. It can be dangerous. I pray for my little ones every day, every morning, every night I pray for them. That God get them to say, church, get them to school safe, come home safe. A lot of kids go to school, don't make it back home. Dangerous in school now. But guess what? When they give their heart to Jesus, even if something happens at school and they don't make it back home, listen, when they die, where do they go? To heaven. Because they gave Jesus their hearts. They gave him their hearts. Pray for our young people that they will give God their hearts. Now, you can use what I gave you a little while ago about voting. Feel, felt, found. Y'all remember that? You can tell them, I used to feel that way. I felt that way. Huh? But I found out that there was a God, had a son named Jesus. And Jesus lived, he died, was buried in a borrowed tomb for me. But he rose the third day. And he gives me an invitation to be with him. And I accepted that invitation. I want you to do that. I used to feel like you feel, like you felt. Amen, amen. It's offering time. Come on. Offering time. Offering time. Time for us to give. Time for us to give to the household of faith. For those of you who want to give electronically, they'll put it up on the, on the monitor so you can see it. On the, you can see it. You can give electronically. You can give by. Use your smartphone. You can use your computer, your tablet, whatever. Or you can use your cash. Write a check if it's good. <laughs> amen, amen. Come on. Come on, let's give. Listen, listen, hold on for a second. Let me, let me do this one more time because I got to make sure that everybody got it right. It's offering time. You got something to give, you ought to be happy this morning. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. We come to give cheerfully unto the Lord. Amen, amen. Our ushers are going to come. Everybody stand. Come on, ushers. Give them something to march with, Jay. Come on. happily this morning, everybody. How great is our God.
All stand. All stand. Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be here and forgive on this day. We're thankful for how you have given unto us. Freely you've given to us. Freely we give back to you, God. And we give to you freely because you, your word says you love a cheerful giver. So we give cheerfully back to you. Take our gifts now, and I pray that you'll be pleased with our giving on this morning. Bless the gift, but bless the giver of the gift. And use our gift for the edifying of thy kingdom down here on earth. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. Before we go any further, I'm going to, so Sheila wants to know if all the kids can come and sit right over here. All the kids, so she can get your stuff. All the children, all the kids. Yeah. And then adults, we're going to go back in the back because they've got something back there for us. For those of us. It's, it's healthy, it's healthy food. It's healthy food. <laughs> that that means y'all ain't going if it's healthy food. <laughs> amen, amen. Broccoli, carrots, lettuce, celery. <laughs> amen. Got all the young people. All the young people. Thank you for coming this morning. God bless each of you. We pray heaven's blessings upon you. Come on, bow your heads with me. Let's pray as we go down. Father, we thank you. We love you. We praise you this morning. We thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit here in this place. I ask now that as we dismiss from this place, that you will never dismiss us from your watchful eye. Keep your eyes upon us. Keep your hands on us, God, and let us walk in the pathway of righteousness that we may do thy blessed will. Bless the food that we are about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. amen and amen. God bless you.